It's Cornwall, most of the businesses here are small businesses and if we want to solve the employment gaps in the region for older people, disabled people and people with long-term health conditions, we really need to ask small businesses what would help them to become more inclusive. People here in the shops, in the high street, in Falmouth, but also major industries in Cornwall like hospitality, tech, construction, social care, we need to hear what they have to add to this conversation. Hi, I'm Jane Abraham. I work as policy advisor for the Inclusivity Project. Um, I'm also a small business owner, Stitches and Cream here in Falmouth, um, and I have been working for government for a number of years on the workplace wellbeing and inclusivity agenda, mainly sort of as a policy fellow and advisor. When the Inclusivity Project began in 2019, the government were already sort of very focused on narrowing the um, disability gap, employment gap, and also quite aware that older workers were going to be a predominant demographic within the workplace. Hello, I'm Laurie McGowan. I'm the project manager for the Inclusivity Project, and I've got a particular interest in the policy side of things. The pandemic's had a massive impact on everybody's life, and this includes in the workplace. Businesses have had to become COVID safe, in some cases have had to close, furlough staff and now dealing with reopening. Some people have had to deal with remote working and this has had a big impact on everybody's mental and physical health. Uh, small businesses are creative anyway because they have to be, they don't have the resources that the large businesses do. Um, and coming out of Covid I think we've all had to learn new ways of working and small businesses have played their part doing that um, and we all understand the importance of happy healthy staff. The Inclusivity Project started in 2019 with three clear aims. Firstly, to support Cornish businesses become more inclusive employers. Secondly, to add to the research base around work and health. And the third is a bigger picture approach through systems thinking and what key decisions can have the biggest impact on policy around work and health. Uh, the policy makers and the people that should be listening to us this year are local government, national policy makers, lobbyist groups and agencies that are involved with this demographic of people and the people that we are trying to support. I think it's really important that national policy makers get to hear the voice of small businesses. Um, they are really hard to reach and they are a really important sector that contribute to the economy of the UK. So hearing their voice is a really important thing for national policy makers. So the University of Exeter has been leading on some key areas of research. Firstly, identifying what policies already exist in this area. We've been looking how businesses respond in resilient ways to these types of challenges and also in areas such as unconscious bias, particularly how they affect older people and people with disabilities. We've worked with some fantastic networks over the course of this project, Disability Cornwall and Age UK Cornwall and the Cornwall and Arsacilly Digital Partnership, just to name but a few. Um, we will continue to work with these partnerships as we continue with the project and as we move forward. It's really important that businesses in Cornwall contribute to the work and health conversation. With around 98% of businesses being either small or medium in size, it's important that areas of rural and coastal towns contribute to the conversation as well as big cities and urban areas. Running a small business has taught me that I need to focus very much on my work-life balance and Focusing on my own well-being has made me really think about the well-being of my staff too and how we support our staff going forward around mental, physical health, but also make them feel part of the team. So keep asking, keep the conversation going, keep figuring it out because ultimately diversity benefits business. If you'd like to find out more about the Inclusivity Project, business support available, research and policy work, then please join our mailing list and we'd be delighted to share our learning.